Hello and welcome back to our KSP career and as I noted in the previous episode in this episode we will be building the distant explorer or the plot explorer and if you guys are watching this while it's still early access uh, I guess that means one of the two things in which case either you are one of my patrons or YouTube members in which case I thank you and salute you for being there or you have watched the previous video to the end and click the end screen, which I also applaud you and thank you so much for doing so because it helped me out a great deal. And I hope you will like the episode because today you will be shown how to build the magnificent crop that you have seen take off in the previous episode. So first things first, I'm going with Octo 2 because it has the most, you know, options that it, it, it can give me. And then I'm placing the struts and of course the reaction wheels because we want to have the reaction wheels. Then we're putting this uh, big antenna that we have just unlocked. It's a Communitron C, 700 gigameter range. And then we're gonna be placing a lot of the science experiments. I'm just extending the data capacity to be as much as possible because I don't know how little data throughput I will get. And of course I'm gonna be jam packing every science experiment that I possibly could fit in there without greatly affecting everything. So. Yeah, mystery go. I know that you have to retrieve the samples. Maybe I can actually force it to send. I'm not sure. However, I'm focusing on those that I can send primarily. Magnetometer. Kerbal engineer we all need, obviously. I mean, I could adjust it so it's partless. And as you can see, I will be putting the Nuke Ray RTGs. Yes, this is the first craft that I'm using RTGs for. But the thing that puzzles me is that they're actually producing some heat from what I've said, what it said in these. So I'm actually thinking of jamming them a little bit further up. Let's see. Yeah, these experiments can be put on the sidelines and I want to be jam packing two gigant or solar panels because I'm thinking redundancy because this is, the mission is going to take a long time. Plock is very, very far away. So I want to make sure that I can actually, you know, do something. Okay, so I'm putting the ant engine. I'm just curious. 0 0.04 thrust to weight? No way. Uh, do I have monoprop here? I don't think I have. Then I should probably go with monoprop, perhaps. I'm thinking of these chickadee landing engines. They are really strong. So if I place like... Hold on. Uh, you're sticking to the wrong part. Okay, now, these two. So if I put these chickadees... How much thrust to weight do they have? 7.48 goodness gracious great balls of fire i mean seriously all right and then i cram in these two small tanks and i have 471 meters per second not stellar but it can be put to good use all right probe plock explorer i've going, been going a little bit back and forth with the name first i call it Pro plock explorer then distant explorer because it could be used for multiple planets and then i reverted back to plock explorer well yeah it's a mess don't ask me what's in my head, sometimes I don't know myself. Okay, RPWS goes here, the tanks go up. You go up as well. Alright, I like how it looks so far, but uh, as I said, RTGs are producing heat. I'm thinking maybe I should be focusing, see, shut down temp 10,000 and they radiate something at least. So I'm thinking here radiator control panels and I now have to figure out the place where I'm actually going to stick them. So um, I'm thinking this thermal control system, it hasn't failed me yet. So radiates 13 kilowatts at 400k, so two of them should do just nicely. The question is where I'm going to stick them. Hmm. Ideal place would be instead of these fuel tanks. So where I'm going to place the RPWS, maybe here, so it's not in the way of anything. Okay, then uh, you two I'm going to be placing further down. Oh, 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 not the right angle. There we go, right angle. And now you are going to go a little bit up. And I'm just going to drag you up to offset, so it looks like as if you were attached directly to the RTGs. I think that's good, actually. Jam-packed nicely, very tight everything. And, to, and it should fit within the fairing. So let's pull the, you know, groups. One, the solar panels, two, the radiators, and we're golden. All right. 
I'm gonna call it Distant Explorer because I want this Distant Explorer to make multiple of them when we'll have the Sarnas launch window and all others. Decoupler, yes. And then we're gonna be putting the fairing. Now, fairing, uh, I'm thinking like, that should be good enough. Close cross fairing section. I'm just gonna put a small, like, come on. It's messing with me, isn't it? There we go, one, two, and then close it up. We don't want it to be too big. All right, clamshell deploy always. And I actually like it the way it is. All right, perfect. Now let's put in the reaction wheels. And I'm thinking some interstage, obviously, because this is gonna go to plug, so I need really efficient fuel thingy. Now, I think the problem is with this being 1.8, I don't think it's out of the box fuel. So I'm gonna actually just put in like this tank, white one, and I stick this Hecate engine. Should it go well? What would be the amount thrust to weight ratio of this? Vacuum, it gives me 2066 meters per second. Well, that's not exactly stellar. I need more. 3530, 3300. Um, do we have another option? Oh, and I need one again. Once again, I need the thrust plate. Okay, if I put the thrust plate, then it should be fine. Hikate engine. 32,000. Let's just see. I'm just curious if I place something like. Yeah, this would be better. Hmm. Nope. There we go. That's nice. That would work. Alright, so I guess it's Hikot engine after all. Bagora, then we put the big. 2.5 meter fuel tank and I maybe could be putting one more and then I'm looking for my mainsail. My mainsail has way more thrust away than I need it. So 7,000, I think we could improve this because I think I'll need a lot more Delta V here. 8,025, good, better, just not good enough. And here I'm gonna be placing another reaction wheel. Typically you don't want multiple reaction wheels because the rocket then starts wobbling like a wet noodle after you have cooked it with some, you know, gravioli and pasta. So you might want to be careful, you know, if, if you're doing that, you have to disable one of the wheels. So yeah, just a word of warning. Okay, this looks much better now. Staging. Just make sure to correct my staging. There we go. That's good enough. And now I think... 8,000 and 100 Delta V is nice, but I could do better. I'm gonna flip this like this, and then I'm gonna be putting some SRBs. We haven't been doing SRBs for a while now, so might as well actually do them. Let's see. Hydraulic detachment manifold, and give me the big ones. Is this this kickback, or... Nope. Oh, these are the shuttle boosters. Pollux. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Pollux. All right, there we go. So then I want to be taking the booster cap, which is not this one, this one, yes. All right, and that's it. One major warning though, you want to auto strut everything, which is something that I did not do. So word of warning to you guys, you know. All right, anyway, guys, I mean, if you're enjoying this, I would really, uh, I would really urge you to, you know, boop the like button. It helps me out a great deal, especially with motivation and everything. And I know that you guys are enjoying. You've told me sometimes in the comments below. So, thank you so much. And hopefully, it's not a too grindy to a halt. But you know, I'm trying. What can I tell you? All right, I'm disabling the torque on this one to make sure that this goes correctly. I've auto strutted this to the heaviest part, this to the heaviest parts, and this to the heaviest parts, but for some reason I never auto strutted the engine. 